Hey everybody, welcome to Begins Wood Shop. Today I'm going to bring you on a little shop tour and uh, show you around the place. Stay tuned and enjoy. Are you a good girl? Hey Lily. Do you like woodworking? 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 So she hangs out with me uh, at, at the shop all the time. She's always here under my feet. And I gotta be really careful sometimes because she is so much in the way that I scared to hurt her sometimes. Okay, so to start off, I uh, got a little belt sander here. <laughs> By little, I mean six inch belt and nine inch disc sander from King Canada. Uh, it's served me well. I got it dirt cheap and I've cleaned it up to new, but the owner took care of it anyway, so it wasn't too hard to clean up. And uh, that serves me real well. So as you can see, I just changed the belts, cleaned up the system or the, the machine, and everything's looking nice. I also have my King drill press. I have a lot of King tools. It's a good quality tool. I don't mind saying the name. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just because they're good quality and they last. So that's what, those are the ones I get. This here, uh, because of the air is so damp. Um, my chuck was all rusted, everything in that whole area was rusted, the bar was rusted, and of course the, the cast iron plate was rusted, and uh, cleaned it all up. So it's looking good too. And uh, you can see uh, Mr. Carmichael's workshop here. He sent me a sticker, thank you very much Steve, I really appreciate that. I know it's been a while, I've been trying to catch up with these stickers. Also, the old general, that there is a beauty three-quarter horsepower one on 100 inch blade on it let me open it up polyurethane um, belt uh, what do you call them wheel belts wheel rubbers rubbers <laughs> I forget what they're called somebody correct me I'll remember by the time I'm done this video uh, also, this one still has a layer of grease on it because I haven't sanded it and cleaned it up yet. Um, but I have greased everything and it is ready to be fully put back to use. I've also fully cleaned it. As you can see, there's really pretty much no dust in it. So that's looking good. As for stickers, let's see. We got ourselves Mr. Fairy sent me this sticker. Great guy, great content, love his channel, and uh, have the pleasure of hanging out with him quite often. Anyway, so he gets a sticker on the general, and also a shop time sticker, which I think I'll put more stickers down below in the bottom here, and uh, I'll have, you know what, I'll have a little quick sticker video after, and I'll put some stickers on. Also, just got this air compressor. Also, had to clean it up completely. It was uh, another one of those Kijiji or you know Craigslist kind of thing finds. Five horsepower, twenty gallons, eighty bucks. Freaking great. Love great sales. Had to had to get it. Takes about a minute for it to fill up full pressure. Uh, the only thing about it is the gauge. It's a little bent, so it sticks. Um, so I got to. Make sure I watch it and it doesn't auto turn off. Uh, so I'm going to have to take this cover off and adjust the pressures and get myself a new pressure gauge for this spot here. I took a pressure gauge and the components off another older one that I had for this area, but I don't have one because of the size of the screw in the back here. So the wall to the right of it here, I have, this is all like drill bits um, for my, like, my uh, gun for screwdrivers and things like that. Miscellaneous things. I've got room in here for more stuff. I've just been doing a super organization lately. Also, here's all my... These things come on sale, these big packs. Uh, so these are all sanding discs for my angle grinder. And different types of pads and, and things for the angle grinder. Um, and that's just for different various types of work with metal. Um, I don't do a lot of it, but I find those work really well. And at ten bucks for a big box, big thing of them, uh, I pick them up here and there. I also got these, uh, made this 
rack here for all my clamps. Uh, I get these at Princess Auto. They're like nothing. They're like three bucks. Uh, sometimes they go on sale even cheaper than that. Anyway, they make great clamps. They're, I mean, there's nothing special about them. They don't have fancy uh, names on them and everything, but they work really well and do the exact same thing. Also, the bar clamps. I got eight or ten of them. I have a bunch more downstairs. And I got them all for friggin' next to nothing, like 40 bucks, something ridiculous. So I picked them all up at the same time, and wow, bar clamps are awesome. Love having them. So let's go ahead and move on over here, and I'll show you this corner. In this corner, uh, it's directly right again from my bar clamp rack. And this is basically a sharpening area. It holds my sandpaper. Um, I found this whole shelving unit. I found a lot of these shelving units in the garbage uh, on big garbage days when they throw out all those like you know people throw out their beds and throw out whatever those big things that's when I get this stuff that's my gold mine time for my wood shop and then in this area is all my finishes I also store my router table um, it holds my router and all my bits and I store that underneath here I actually used to leave this on it because my wood shop leaks and this has a rubber top and fabric bottom. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to use this for my table saw uh, because this is now out of the way completely and won't get leaked on. Knock on wood. Then we move on over this way. So I'll give you a little close up here on my miter station. I built it for a single miter that I had. It wasn't a sliding miter, but then I found this puppy real cheap. So um, I'm, I've modified this table to accept this beast right here. Now I have painted, taken this apart and I've painted the guards and stuff. So I'm still in the process of putting this back together. That's why the safety guard isn't on it. But don't worry, it's unplugged. I've got up top here where I hold my uh, miscellaneous saws and also my squares and some punch kits and things just different miscellaneous things because I can. So next we'll move over to the cabinet. Next in line I have my outfeed table. This table here is built to be exactly the height of my table saw and slightly under. Um, and basically it's got wheels I got a little clamp here for just doing different things and I use like cloth and things to keep uh, from marking my wood. Uh, I got my mallet stored right here. And a little, I just drilled a hole into the base of my little, I made a little till. Again I use the very simple option of having a cloth curtain as a drawer. It just takes keeps the dust off things. Got my sandpaper, I have my four inch jointer down there. Um, that puppy there I got, it was all rusted and I've refinished it. It needs a motor attached to it, which I have all set up. Um, but I really, I'm not sure, I don't know, I just don't use it. I also have a smaller belt sander here. My smaller ones for finer sanding and my bigger one is for the low grits. Uh, I also keep like my, um, hooks, S hooks, or whatever you call them, uh, bench hooks, on my in my drawer in my bottom shelf here. I got a bigger one. I got different size ones. I got different things with tracks on them, and that's all for mostly hand tool work and stuff. I also keep a stuff over here. Yeah, sometimes it gets in the way. I just move off the shelves. My burnisher. I just move them off if I need the I need the space to slide things over. Um, but it's handy to have my tools right there, little things to grab and work on. I also just keep a little square head because it's good for making little lines and square things and whatever. So that just rolls out of that space. Hey Lily. Okay, so right here is my cabinet. I got a little rack to hold my hand saws. Uh, you might have seen those in a pro tip video I had on uh, just making quick little cuts. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. It's a very insightful video. 
Uh, also, I use a magnet bar and it holds my uh, marking gauges and depth gauges, my chisels, and um, oh, this should be hanging up over here. Also, just all my little hand tool things and hand stuff. I got engineer squares, pencils, um, I got scrapers, and uh, just, you know, you can see it, bevel gauges, spacers, tilt box, and uh, my handy dandy planes. So, that's that. I also got some older, got an old antique scraper up here, Stanley, and I got some uh, antique planes I want to finish and fix up there eventually. This here is a very special addition to the wood shop. Uh, Matt Brander, the bearded woodworker, hand carved that out for me out of a piece of cherry. Much appreciated, Matt, and love having it hanging in my shop, and love seeing it every time I look at it. Great, great gift. Thank you very much. In this corner, I also have a uh, just a, this drawer here, this cabinet. It holds all my drill press stuff, my bits, Forstner bits, um, drill bits, si hole sizers, um, hole cutters, just everything to do with the drill bit. I have miscellaneous stuff here. I use tool totes uh, to hold all my like wrenches, uh, well, sorry, um, pliers and things, different kinds of pliers and heavier tools. And this one here is like, I have electrical, like my um, multimeter and different things that I use for that stuff. Last but not, second last but not least, my table saw. I use my table saw sled so much. Uh, I just wax up the bottom, it slides real nice now that it's full of wax. If you haven't made yourself one of these, go ahead and make yourself one because it is so useful. It's, I don't know how you live without it. I don't know how I would, anyway. On top of that, I tuck my table saw in at night. So says April Wilkerson. Um, the reason I do that is because the air around here is so moist, ouch, because I'm right on the ocean, uh, that the cast iron just sucks out the water and rusts. Now, this time, let's take a look at what I've done. I feel like I'm getting better at it. Watched a few videos of people cleaning their table saws. Um, Drew Short did a really good video. So I took real, I took my time on this one. And then I used some rust inhibitor spray, let it soak, cleaned it off, completely got rid of everything off of it, and then put a wax finish on it, beeswax finish. That should hold it. And I'll keep reapplying the beeswax finish every few uses to keep it this clean. It's a lot of work uh, de-rusting this, and I don't like it rusting. The problem is I have, um, I get leaks in the roof, and it comes straight down, and it's always in a different spot, depending on the way the wind is, and not long ago, I had a whole puddle right on top of my table saw. So, yeah, um, that's that. There's my lumber. There's my lumber. There's my lumber, all up in the rafters here, my lumber, and there's a quick little glimpse of my wood shop. Oh, and that racks all my extra wood and lumber and stuff. Trevor Carter made me this for my wood shop. Nice guy. Love it. Thank you very much. Awesome. Great work, Trevor. Great work. Thank you. Oh, well, there's something else I got out of the garbage. That's a bed. That's a headboard for a bed. And um, I just put a backing on it from some boards I got out of the garbage and then screwed it to the wall. There's my door to the outside. I have an outdoor wood shop where I process my lumber, my wood for the winter. Um, also, 
store wood that I find or people offer to cut down their trees. That's some elm I got. I just put a video out on that. I gotta get them sealed, the end sealed on those. I got some more elm down there. You can see it. And a big lawn to cut. I've been burning a lot of the debris, so uh, I've cleaned up a lot there in the past bit. So here's my lathe area, and a while back I was talking to Sterling Davis. He did a video on a nice lathe rack that he did. So I started making one, and, jeez, what was that, like four months ago. Anyway, I found that in the garbage, and my lathe tools fit in it perfectly. So I ended up putting my lathe tool rack uh, on hold because I have so many other things on the go. Um, this is doing for now. But I am looking forward to making that video, and if you haven't seen Sterling Davis' stuff, check him out. Uh, he does some really cool stuff, and really nice guy. Really nice guy. So, I use my old Army for Seeing Bach kit. Just hold some uh, spur heads, tail stuff, stock, extra belt, and uh, that's pretty much it that stays in there. Just little fine parts that I don't want to lose. So this here is my lathe, it's a 12 inch lathe, uh, I've got 37 inch expansion between centers and uh, it runs real nice. Uh, I've Right now I've got a pen mandrel on it, I use it for a lot of things, um, make mallets, I make pens, uh, all sorts of things. Very great tool, love having it, I traded this for a... Um, radial arm saw that I had. Uh, I didn't like, when I was just getting into it, I, I got the tape, when I bought my table saw, the guy gave me a radial arm saw with it for nothing. And I didn't like the radial arm saw, just too scary, not scary, well, yes, intimidating, uh, especially being new to woodworking. I didn't like the blade sliding back and forth, especially with my uneven floors. So, I also wanted a lathe at the time, so I put on my to Gigi, I put that I was trading it and looking for a lathe, and luck had me, somebody answered. So here it is. Lathe in this corner, I just have some bull blanks, like some elm that I just cut up. Um, there's a big chunk of elm right here, and then some electrical stuff and things. Also, an old toolbox that I got out of the garbage again, and you can see this old desk. Is about 100 years old. Uh, that's holding my lathe. You see, I got it protected with multiple layers of wood. Now, the thing about this wood shop is it used to be a convenience store back in the early 1900s, and that was the counter in which they sold things. So they had that in the other room along the back wall, and they stood behind it, and, and that was their cash drawers, and that's this is what they used to sell stuff. And I imagine do put work and things on it. I don't know what they I don't know what they did back then, but pretty cool, very cool having a place that has history. It's uh, very awesome. Hi everybody, and welcome to back to back a back a back a ba bla. Hey everybody, and welcome to McGinn's Wood Shop.